video we're going to show how students can play with GeoGebra to see that the interior angle of sum of any triangle is 180 degrees. So the first thing I would do is set this up and the students can do this or you can set this up for them is to first create a, an arbitrary triangle. Let's say ABC. So A, B, and C. All right, close that triangle and now for that for that triangle you want to set up the angles. So we have angle A up here, and I do this all the time. I, if you click the points in the wrong order, it'll look at the exterior angle. So I want to click in the counterclockwise, uh, the clockwise order here, and then here as well, and then one last time. And you can move things around here so that it's clear for your students, right? The value of the angles and the labels of the angles, however you want to see it. The next step is to actually use a midpoint tool and you want to set up the midpoints of sides AB and AC. And the next thing you'd like to do, I think that makes the most sense here, is to set up some sliders. So we click over here for a slider. This is going to be an angle slider. We want the maximum angle to be 180. And it, you can choose any increment. I choose increments of 10 here. And the angle that we're actually sliding by, right, uh, is a variable here, or we're going to rotate here in a moment. So the, this we're actually setting up a variable as we set up the slider. That's the key. We're creating a slider, we're also creating a variable. And there it is right there. Now we set up our next slider for our next variable, our next angle variable, and it automatically picks the next letter in the Greek alphabet. And we want the maximum, again, to be 180 and increments of 10. Of course, you can change that, although um, I think it does make the most sense to use a max of 180 in this case. Okay, so now what we want to do is rotate the triangle around the two midpoints by the angles that we just set up, these two angles over here. So to do that, I, I click my rotation tool, rotate object about a point, click my triangle, and then point D. I want to actually rotate this counterclockwise, click over here and pick angle, the angle, the, well, the D angle, let's call it, up here, and click OK. So notice it gives you a rotation because our rotation is already set at 45 degrees. And now, if we go back to our move tool, you can see what's happening here. As we change this angle, we change the rotation of the triangle. Now we want to rotate our original triangle around the other point, the other midpoint we found, point E. So I click my original triangle and now I click point E. This is going to be a clockwise rotation and we're going to pick the other angle we set up and notice it doesn't automatically replace the 45, I delete that and it gives me a second triangle that I can rotate. Go over to my move tool and you can see how this is rotated and now what we hope students will see of course is that by rotating these two triangles, we're really moving the two angles in their original spots down here, where they were, up here in GeoGebra, to show that we have a straight line. Now I want to label the angles that I'm hoping to highlight. So I'm going to click my angle tool right here, and click these three points. This angle is going to be important, and let me move the other triangle a little bit. And this angle down here is going to be really important for our students. So we click the points we want. OK, now this looks really messy and we want to clean it up a little bit. So let's go to our object properties. Here are the angles we've set up so far. For the first three angles, I don't really need to see the labels. Because, let's just take a look why I did that. Right, when we are sliding these triangles around, look at this, when they go back to their original position, right? those angles are already labeled, we're already given them, so we don't need them twice, it's a little bit redundant. The next thing I'm going to do, go back to my object properties, is that, well, I don't need all of these different points labeled, it doesn't really help me here. So I'm only going to leave uh, certain points labeled to help the construction uh, look its best. So I don't need a, an a sub 1 and an a prime, a, a prime and a prime sub 1, now what are points B, B, prime, B, prime, 1? Do I need all these? Absolutely not. And which one am I going to keep? 
Well, I'm not exactly sure what the best choice is here and when we're learning, um, but it might make the most sense to just keep, um, let's say, B prime. Let's see how that looks for a moment. That's nice because I think it shows the student that we're moving point B from its original spot down here, and we're rotating it so it lines up here. It shows that movement. And I might move B prime a little bit so that doesn't get in the way of A. It's a little bit better. Let me fix that over here. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. And we'll do the same thing over here because we don't need all these points. Also, we don't need our midpoints visible, really. Point E and, and point D. Clean up a little bit more. Back to the object properties. Now I'm going to have C prime 1 be visible here. That's the point C on our third triangle. Right? So students can see how that point moves. And again, I'm just going to move this so we can still see it. Maybe over here. It looks better. And then let's just fix point B so everything lines up. Fix these angles as well. Okay. So now, right, as students play with this, what we hope they realize is that the object here is to rotate the triangle so that we're moving the angle and lining them up. And the point is, of course, that these three angles can always be lined up in a way to make a straight line, which is why, right, the three interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180. But I noticed that these are switched, right? This angle should be here and that there, I believe. Yep. So this, see how that looks. The, the point is, of course, that you want this to look nice and you want this to look, right, good for the students so they can set it up and think about it. So I'm just playing it there. Okay. So what else can we do? Well, I think it would make some sense to add some dynamic text. And there are lots of things you can add. But one thing I want to talk about is the sum of the interior angles. So I type that in. And now I want to set up my sum. The sum is going to be equal to what? Well, the first three angles we set up, alpha and beta. And I'm embarrassed to say I don't know how to pronounce this one right here. Oops. So anyway, um, click over here to get these angles that we just set up. So that we're defining the sum as the sum of the first three angles of the triangle. And then we can insert some dynamic text. Sum equals, and then click on the sum you just set up. And now it always shows, at least, that no matter how this triangle looks, the sum is 180. That's a nice feature to have in there. And, of course, you can encourage students to set up interesting types of triangles and to show how this rotation idea always works. Right, I think that's a nice benefit of this, pro of this setup. You can also color code angles and set up in certain ways and hide labels and different things to make this as clear as possible. Of course, it's your construction, and the point is to help students learn this idea. So however you want to do that, however you want to customize it, um, is, is, of course, the best way for you and your learners. Thanks.